A man will be imprisoned in a room with the door unlocked that opens inwards, as long as he doesn't think to pull rather than push. I love this quote and it sums up the Inside Out revolution perfectly. It shows us the power our thoughts have over us. Our thoughts can trap us or free us. We can make ourselves miserable or happy. We can feel confident or insecure. It all comes from inside. These are the top lessons I got from the book The Inside Out Revolution by Michael Neal. Lesson 1. We are not living in the world, we are living in our thoughts about the world. We often forget how much our thoughts shape our reality. Two people can be in the exact same situation and have the same thing happen and view it completely differently. One could be happy about the situation while the other miserable. It's all about the thoughts you choose to apply. Einstein said, reality is an illusion, albeit a persistent one. The illusion is that we think that we are experiencing the world, but we are actually experiencing our thoughts about the world. I play quite a lot of football each week, and when I do my performance changes a lot depending on what's going on inside my head. Some weeks I feel confident and think that the other players on my team think I'm playing well, because I have the thought in my head that I'm a good player. When I think this, I play much better and score more often. Other weeks it can be the opposite. I can feel underconfident and think the other players don't think I'm playing well. I have the thought in my head that I'm not a good player. When I think this, the accuracy of my shooting goes down dramatically and I play a lot worse. In reality, the other players probably aren't thinking much about my performance and are more bothered about what they are doing. When I change my thoughts, my reality changes. So how does this help us? It shows us the importance of a positive mindset in shaping our reality. If you practice having positive thoughts, you'll change your reality for the better. To do this, try using positive affirmations, which is just saying positive things to yourself over and over. Alternately, you can make a playlist of songs, I have mine on Spotify, which is full of positive affirmations. Two of my favourite are Thunder by Imagine Dragons and Glorious by Macklemore. Listen to the playlist whenever you want to change your thinking to be more positive. Lesson 2. Good mental health is the factory default of humans. Michael Neal says meditation is a natural state of humans because we have to think our way out of a calm mind. Sometimes it's extremely difficult to think of nothing. It's a classic thing, don't think of pink elephants, so that's what you'll think about. If you've ever tried meditating, you'll have to try and think of nothing, and suddenly your brain pulls hundreds of different thoughts from anywhere. I'm still new to meditation, but what I do is I close my eyes and imagine a ball in front of me. Inside the ball is all my thoughts, and I can see them, but they can't get out unless I want to look at them. This might sound a bit odd, but for me it helps me to practice seeing my thoughts objectively like they're happening to someone else. This way, in situations, if I ever get annoyed or stressed, I can quickly imagine the ball in front of me and know that I don't have to feel an emotional connection to the thoughts, because that's all they are. Thoughts. There's a story in the book. A pilot is flying a plane that suddenly starts going down. He begins frantically pulling at the controls and doing everything he can to level the plane. He makes contact with the control centre and they tell him to let go of the controls. But I'll crash, he says. I need to level out the plane and pull harder on the controls, not let go. The control center repeats, let go of all the controls. The pilot still won't listen. Trust me, says the person in the control center, let go of the controls. Reluctantly, the pilot lets go and suddenly the plane levels out. The plane was a self-writing plane with an automatic system that will level out the plane in case of an emergency, but it only works if the controls aren't interfered with. The pilot was trying so hard to fix the problem that it was actually causing the problem. This relates to the way we try and sort out our mental state. We try so hard to be happy, reading books and thinking of techniques. We are constantly questioning if what we are doing is right or not. Positive affirmations, empowering questions and other techniques are all really fantastic and do work. The thing is that sometimes you have to let go of the controls and allow yourself to actually enjoy being alive and take the pressure off. Take moments each day to stop and breathe. Smile and think. It's amazing that all of this actually exists. Albert Camus says, you will never be happy if you continue to search for what happiness consists of. Try once a day, looking around at your situation and picking out one small thing to be happy about. It might be that the chair you're sitting on is particularly comfortable, a colour you see is vivid, or you can see the sun coming through a window. It sounds corny, but you're training your brain to notice small things, which means you appreciate very small gifts in life more often. There are millions of these little things in life to be happy about, so in any situation you always have a small reason to be happy that you can focus on. Lesson 3. You are only ever one thought away from happiness. This is a great thought, it made me smile a lot when I first heard it. In any situation, there is just one thought that can change the way you perceive it from negative to positive. For example, like most people, I used to hate being stuck in traffic. I'd be stuck in traffic with a friend and all I would think about was how much I hated being in the traffic. I'd explain that it was tiring on your legs because you always have to keep pressing the pedals, slowly edging forward and it's so boring. 
I'd wish away the time in the car and would be in a bad mood until it was over. One thought has changed being stuck in traffic from negative to positive. The thought was, what if being stuck in traffic is a sign that I should enjoy spending some uninterrupted time with whoever is in the car with me? If I'm stuck in traffic for 20 minutes, I have nothing to do but talk to the friend in the car. Maybe something is telling me to slow down and enjoy the moment. Rather than moaning, I put on good music and enjoy the present moment, or I start up a deeper conversation that sometimes we don't take the time to have because we're always rushing around. The situation of being stuck in a traffic jam is certainly way more enjoyable than it used to be for me. You can apply this to a lot of situations. You could see something as breaking as a reason to find something new to replace it. You might miss a job opportunity, maybe it's a sign that the job would have sucked and instead you should go off and explore somewhere new. There's a lot of ways to think about things and it's always more useful to think positively. Train yourself to start making the most out of bad situations. Lesson 4. Don't sacrifice present happiness for future happiness. Sacrificing present happiness for future happiness is like punching yourself in the face because it feels good when you stop. This part of the book made me laugh a lot because it is so true. I went to the Uni of Nottingham for a year before deciding to leave. I would go to the library and study from 7am in the morning and would only come out for lectures and then go straight back in and most days I'd only come out at 6pm. I was supposedly the perfect student. Working alone in the library made me feel terrible so I thought it would be a good idea to plan something in the future to enjoy as a reward that would motivate me for keeping going. So I arranged a fun filled summer with the final part being a month long holiday in Spain. I kept telling myself to keep working and that the summer would come and it would all be worth it and I'd have so much fun. I was sacrificing present happiness for future happiness. When I finally did go to Spain, I didn't really feel much at all. It was supposed to be so great and worth the wait. I'd spent all that time in the library waiting for this holiday and it just wasn't worth it. Spain was enjoyable in some ways, but not the life-changing excitement I'd pictured when I was doing all the studying. I learned a lot from this situation. To start, I left university and was confused for a while, but then I realised you have to keep one eye on the future happiness and one eye on present happiness. All we ever have is the present. Tony Robbins says, if you're in your head, you're dead. If you're always thinking about the future, you might as well already be dead, because you're never actually experiencing the present moment. So don't sacrifice present happiness for future happiness. Work towards a happy future in an enjoyable way. So to summarise. 1. We are not living in the world, we are living in our thoughts about the world. 2. Good mental health is the factory default of humans. 3. You are only ever one thought away from happiness. 4. Don't sacrifice present happiness for future happiness.